All right. Well, welcome everybody to the John Lavinia Success Mastermind general session. <laughs> so I had to think about this. I've done so many trainings this week. Uh, you know, I have to kind of like locate where I am and, and what we're talking about here. So it's so good to see all of you um, on here today. And, um, to, you know, the conversation that I wanted to have today is really about um, pushing through adversities and obstacles um, in your business if that's a topic that you guys would like to talk about. Can you nod, nod heads, thumbs up? Sounds good. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so I think we can all agree that sometimes our businesses are shit shows, right? Can we all agree on that? <laughs> Right. It happens. Suzanne's laughing. So it happens, you know, um, with every business, I mean, even in life, it's like you go through life and you have this picture of like, oh, you know, we're, you know, we're going to have this experience or that experience. And sometimes it turns out great. And sometimes it turns out even better than we expected. And sometimes it doesn't turn out even half as well as we would have liked it to. But early on in life, I, I really learned some lessons that have helped me in business because my business at times, there's times where it's like free flowing. There's times where we have periods of growth and we're all like, like, ah, okay, what are we doing here? We need to like bring on new people or, you know, and then there's times when um, we look at it and we reassess and we say, okay, this is working. This isn't working. You know, what are we, what are we going to do going forward? But I'm going to share a story with you about something that was pretty epic um, for me. It was a lesson that I learned in a very unseemingly way that really helped me not stress so much about business or the perfectionism in business that can come with it. And then we'll talk about how this like comes to adversities. So when John and I were getting married, um, you know, we were planning our wedding and we had like a pretty long engagement. So we were together like two and a half years. And then literally John's dad and stepmom like forced him to propose because they were like, what are you doing? Right. So they gave him the ring or they gave him the diamond. He went and picked out the ring and then he proposed. And um, we had just such a fun proposal. Uh, I'll share that story another time. But it, um, it involves some angry swans and a police officer, and it was definitely a really great proposal. Um, and then we, you know, fast forward, we, we moved out to Arizona, we bought a house, and we then were planning a wedding. And we weren't planning a wedding just because, I don't know, I didn't want to spend money on a wedding. But at the same time, I didn't want to elope or get married in Vegas. So I wanted to have a wedding, but I didn't want to spend money on it. And then it kind of all worked out that we were going to um, get married. Now, when you're paying, when you're putting money down for anything, there's like this expectation that it's all going to go perfect. Does anyone else ever have that expectation? Like you're going to pay for something and it's going to be like the perfect experience, right? Because we, we have this thing like we're, we're passing money over and it's going to be like this ideal, perfect experience. And well, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And I'll, I'll take you through a couple of scenarios of this. Well, when we were um, meeting with the event hall, we got married in this event hall that was owned by the minister and his wife. And they were the sweetest couple ever. And they had this kind of wonky story too, where um, they were both married to other people and the four of them were all like best friends. And then the one husband and the one wife realized that they were actually in love with each other and they ended up getting divorced. And the other husband and the other wife realized that they were in love with each other too. So they kind of like partner swapped. And I was like, okay, this is interesting, right? I'm getting this story like while I'm planning my wedding, which I'm assuming is going to be like, this is my partner for life, right? Um, but it was a really funny story and the me. Um, yeah, I, I literally couldn't make that up, but one of the things she said to me was she said, okay, you're going to put together a plan for your wedding. We're going to do everything that we need to do to make it go right. But I guarantee you something is going to go wrong. 
And I was like, really? I don't want to like kind of lead with that expectation. She's like, there's so many moving parts to a wedding. So many people you have to coordinate. So many guests who have to show up and behave. Like there's going to be things that just go wrong. And I was like, okay, um, I'm not going to lead with that, but thing. Nobody other than you is going to know that it's not right. So if like all of a sudden they served beef instead of chicken and chicken was what you thought you ordered, no one else there is going to know while they're enjoying the beef. Right. And I was like, wow, that's so true. Right. People come to the wedding. They don't really know like what it was supposed to look like or what the experience was supposed to be. They're just going to come and have a fun time. So fast forward to the day of our wedding. And the very first thing that we were going to do is have our photographs done before the wedding. Right. So John and I are already living together. So it's not like him seeing me before the wedding is going to be a big, big surprise. Like he rolled over and saw me naked in the morning. So like we're just going to go over to the wedding and do the photos first, right? To save a lot of time. So we go over to the wedding and over to the place we're having photographs and we have our photographer there, but the photographer is there like to take the pictures. John legit is about to pass out. Like no joke is so nervous that he's like white and I'm like, okay, you cannot look like death in our wedding photos. Cause we're going to be like, these photos might even outlast us. So like, you need to like, look really good in these photos. So I'm like getting him water and everything else. And we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and my flowers aren't there. And I'm like, I can't take my wedding photos without holding my bouquet. Right. So we call the florist and the florist is like, why have you down for like three hours later? And I'm like, um, no, we're doing the photographs like right, right now. Like I told you this. And she was like, oh my gosh, I forgot to write it down. And I was like, well, did you make the flowers already? Or do you need to make them? Like what, what's going on here? And she was like, no, they're made. So she rushes over with the flowers. So that was like the first thing. Then I go and I get into the car and like, we didn't spend money on a limo or whatever. And I have this big white dress and I go to get in the car and the dress touches my face and makeup comes off my face onto this pure white dress right in the front of the dress. And I'm like, holy mother, like, could this be, what is we doing? Right. So then I'm about in tears, right. But I'm trying not to cry because I don't want the rest of my makeup to be messed up. Cause I spent the whole morning getting that done. And my girlfriend, Olivia, who did my makeup, she was like, don't worry. And she's, she's Mexican. So she's saying this is like this thick Mexican accent. Don't you worry. We will use that. And I'm like, I have no idea what she's saying. Right. Like I can't understand a word, but apparently there's a magical trick you can do with seltzer water that gets makeup out of stuff. So we get to the place and she's like patting it down and miracle of all miracles. She gets the makeup out of the dress. Right. So I'm like, wow. Okay. So then um, we're like all prepared. The guests are arriving. We did our own floral arrangement. We, we like did the food the night before for the, the hors d'oeuvre hours. So we had that like all set out and we're um, walk, you know, I'm walking up the aisle. John's up there. It's like one of those really magical moments. And I'm standing across from John and the minister starts talking and we're both looking at him like, what the hell are you saying? So John and I had both written our own vows, right? We had both written our own vows and the minister was saying the wrong vows. And we're like at the altar looking at each other, like psychically communicating, like, do we stop, dude? Do we just go with it? Like, and I think both of us just like silently decided to go with it. And then afterwards we were laughing our asses off about it, but it was like, so he's saying completely the wrong vows. And we're, so then, you know, we go to give each other the rings. Um, I pull the ring out. I nearly draw, I nearly lose it in this like lake thing that's there. What do they call it? A moat, right? So I nearly drop the ring. And at this point I'm like, you know, this is, we're married, right? So kiss the bride, we're married <laughs> and it's all going good. And 
what what I realized, and I'll, I'll tell you one other funny story about our wedding that was a total crack up. But I realized that like when I turned around to see the audience, they were just all crying and cheering and, and everything else, right? So they didn't notice any of it. They didn't know the minister was saying the wrong thing. They were just excited about it because John and I were excited about it, right? We were excited to be married. At least I was. He was still on the verge of kind of passing out. But, you know, I think he made it through. We've been, we've been, it'll be next year, it'll be 20 years. So like we've done, we've done pretty good. So then we go in to have the wedding and um, we notice none of John's coworkers are there other than his best man, which was really weird. Like his managers and stuff weren't there. And that's a whole nother story um, that comes out of that. But the, the last really awkward, funny, weird thing that happened in our wedding was when you throw the, um, the bouquet and then you throw the garter, right? Well, the two people who got the bouquet and the garter was my, the person who caught the bouquet was my, and nowadays you can't really separate the men and the women. It's like totally not politically correct. You're supposed to have everybody there to throw the bouquet and, and all of that stuff, right? Well, back 20 years ago, that wasn't, right? So the person who caught the bouquet was my, one of my best friends who was in my wedding, her daughter, who is now a guy, right? So he, she's a transsexual and was dressed like a dude, you know, there at the wedding, caught the bouquet. The person who caught the garter was like my 72 year old uncle who literally looks like he rolled out of the worst trailer park in town, right? Alcoholic, total like weirdo, um, it was my mother's brother, you know, my grandmother had him when she was 14. There's lots of like backstory to this whole thing. So we're all watching this total wacko bean alcoholic put a garter on a transvestite teenager. And I was like, this cannot be any weirder. Like this cannot be any more awkward. Right. So the point of the story is that the whole point is story to take you through this journey, but I am going to share with you how this applies to life and business is that things don't always turn out the way that we want them to turn out, or they don't always look the way we want them to look, but our own reaction to it, it makes all the difference in how it's going to go from there. So I could have either gone totally drama queen and you know, locked myself into the bridal suite in tears and um, reactivity and all of that stuff and had the whole day be ruined. Or I could have just had a really fun time. I probably had a little too much alcohol to make that fun time go right. But, you know, I had a really fun time at my wedding. Everyone else had a really fun time. And no one really knew at the end of the day about anything other than the awkward garter like flower situation, everybody felt a little uncomfortable in that one. But, you know, and, and stories were told for years after that. They were like, hey, do you remember? I'm like, can we just not talk about that? Um, you know, so it's, um, it's how we react to things. In my business, in, in the 17 years or 19 years now that I've been in business, I will tell you that lots of things go wrong and lots of things go right, right? But how you react to it is really what, makes or breaks the deal. So I'll, I'll take you through a couple of scenarios of, of what, of like these types of situations. So this morning I get a frantic message from one of my clients who we just launched their funnel and she sends me a picture of a page. That's like an, Oh no, like a warning sign with an exclamation point. And she's like, this is what people are seeing when they go to buy the product. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Like we tested this like crazy. So I was about to go out for a walk and I was like, okay, I'm going to can my walk for right now. And I'm going to go handle this. And, and I'm communicating with her right away because I don't want her to be in freak out. Right. So one of the things that I really try to do is just communicate, communicate and handle, right. Communicate and handle is kind of like a method that I have. And I go and I dig through this whole thing. And it turns out that the reason people are getting that warning sign 
is because she had hired another vendor to do a PDF ebook and the ebook had the wrong links embedded in it. So the, when people were getting the ebook and they were clicking on a link in this ebook that we didn't do, we didn't make it, we didn't put the links in or whatever, um, they were getting the wrong page, right? So what I said to her, I wasn't like, yo, you know, you freaked me out over something someone else did, blah, 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 blah. I was like, hey, um, I just want to like walk you through this. I walked it through in a video and I said, the best solution to this would be to stop hiring these other cheap vendors and just let us do this stuff, right? Let us do it. I'm sorry you had this experience, but this will make it go right, right? And out of that, instead of being like in a freak out mode or being like, you woke me up in the morning because of some, something someone else did, I, was, I just turned it into an opportunity for her to do more business with us, right? And she was like, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to have you do all this stuff because now we're working on a second funnel, right? And then I actually took her through the whole order process so that she could breathe easy. And I was like, look, this all works. Like this is all working. It's all good. Um, the second experience that we had was I got um, a message from one of our clients who we get a lot of referrals from. And she was like, hey, is there a reason that we haven't gotten these assets yet? Because we do part of their project and then they do the other part. And I saw that my project manager wrote back and was like, here's all of this stuff you know, what's going on. And then I talked to my project manager and I was like, why was there a delay in this? Like, what was, why didn't they get this stuff sooner? Um, they should have gotten it like two weeks ago. What's going on? And when I talked to my project manager, who's amazing, she's an absolutely amazing person. You know, she's just having a very rough time right now. And in the rough time, what's happening is her lease is up here. She's supposed to move to Florida. They are buying a house remotely. So if you can imagine, they're here in Arizona. They're trying to buy a house remotely by Facebook Lives in Florida. And they have put in contracts now on four houses in the last four weeks, and they have been outbid on each house. So doing, the, doing a real estate contract is a lot of work. You know, it's like you have to go through, you have to put in the bid, you have to put in your terms, you have to do all of this. And um, they've been... And, and one was like moments before the deadline was up and they thought they were getting the house, a cash buyer swooped in and um, put an extra like 30 grand on the table for the house that they were going to get. Now she's in a situation where she doesn't have enough time to buy before her lease up is, is here and the time that she needs to go. So now they're going to have to lease a property and it's so stressful, right? It's an extremely stressful situation. So here's how to handle it because a lot of you are, you have employees, right? Or you're working with VAs or you're working with um, service providers um, and that kind of thing. So here's how to handle a situation like that. Um, one, I value my project manager. She does great work. She's also a human being and she's going to have things come up in life that are very stressful, right? So we talk through it. And I was like, okay, so normally you do amazing work. Now you've, you know, dropped the ball on a couple of things. What can we do together to get you through this housing situation? What do I need to pick up? You know, maybe I need to oversee everything again to make sure it's, it's getting pushed through while you're dealing with this. And then, you know, so we worked it out. Like we worked it out. She was like, this is the help I need. This is what I can do. This is what I can't do right now. And then, and then what I did was I went to my client and I said, this is entirely on us. Um, I completely apologize. Um, you know, it won't happen again. These are the mechanisms that we put in to make sure that nothing gets dropped on a timeline again. Right. And I went into our project management software and I looked and I was like, wow, there's some things in here beyond behind deadlines. So we need to like really make sure that we're getting this, these projects done and off our table, right? Done and completed and off the table. So by going to my client and saying that she was like, Hey, no sweat. Life comes up. I really appreciate that you guys apologized. And, and then we also sorted out some issues that we were having with the clients that she was sending us 
that where they weren't returning communication or giving us what we needed to complete the project. So then she was communicating with them to get that done. So then I just looked at it like, what, how can I solve this problem? Right? How can I solve this problem and how can I make it work for all the parties? And when you're operating a business, that really is the viewpoint that you need to take. Um, from my viewpoint, like we want to deliver exceptional service. Do we do that hundred percent of the time? Not always, you know, every once in a while, something falls through the cracks or we miss something and we go back and we fix it and we make sure that we handle whatever was dropped in the first place. Now in an e-commerce business, if you have an e-commerce business, you know, stuff like that happens. You might have a product that, you know, looks great on the outside in the box and then it gets shipped off to somebody and it's missing half of the insides. And you don't know that right? Amazon doesn't know that, but the customer definitely knows it because now they've gotten half of a product, right? And the way that you can solve that is by being very proactive in your communication and just handling whatever it is that needs to be handled, right? So just um, doing what needs to be done in a way that is um, proactive for everybody involved, right? So I think um, that this has been one of the avenues in my business that has made us grow as, qu as quickly as we've grown and has also enabled us to get a lot of referral business because people love the way that we treat them, regardless of whether there's something that's gone wrong or something that we need to fix, right? So it's never been like an epic disaster where someone's like, you guys suck. I'm going all over social media. I'm going to tell everybody how bad you are. Instead, they're like, oh my gosh, I really appreciate the communication. I appreciate that you've um, helped and that you've, you know, over delivered and gone above and beyond to make this go right. So that's the kind of experience that you want to give to your clients and to your customers, because quite frankly, and it's also how you want to treat your vendors. It's also how you want to treat your employees. Um, and I'm not saying like, if my project manager, Sarah, if she was screwing up all the time, she'd be fired, right? That's not the case. This is like a rare occurrence where I'm like, okay, what is going on? Like what's happening in your life? And that was the scenario. So then I'm able to say, okay, how can we fix this? Cause I don't want to lose you. You're a valuable asset. Um, but I also don't want to lose my clients and we need to keep the clients because if I don't keep the clients, then I can't pay you anyways. So, you know, how do we work this out and make it work? And then we put a timeline on it. I was like, okay, great. So for the next, you know, 45 days, I'm going to basically oversee these projects to make sure that they're moving along and getting done. And then after 45 days, everything should be smoothed out. She'll be moved. She'll have a place to live in Florida. Um, everything will be set up and then she can step fully back into the role um, at the same time. And I'm not like docking her pay or anything like that. I'm just treating her like a, the valuable asset that she is and helping her as a, as a person do very well. Right. So to do very well, um, in business. So, um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. And I want to open this up for discussion, uh, to see, you know, maybe what adversities or challenges are you facing, that you could use some perspective on or how have you handled challenges and adversities in a way that's helped you have a successful result from it? Okay, I know that you guys raise your hands here. So I'll look for the raised hands. Let me see. Nobody wants to pop out here. Julia. Hey, Shannon. I'm in trouble Hi. with the computer today. Um, yeah, I just had, uh, I've had a constant stream of uh, bad boxes uh, appearing in Amazon from our shipper in, in China. And um, Emma bought a puzzle the other day and she was kind enough to send me pictures of how disastrous it looked. It was really horrible. And um, 
so what I, and I and it was a puzzle that I thought was okay. The other one I knew had really bad stuff. So what we did there was I pulled them all back from Amazon and um, checked every single box and replaced all the posters because the posters on one of them were bad and it was very expensive. But for me, it's just worth it to have a product that I'm not going to be embarrassed about. Um, but now I know that there are some of the other puzzle that are bad. And so I may have to pull the rest of those back because it was really awful. It was not only crushed at the bottom, but one corner looked like a mouse had chewed it. So, oh man. Yeah. So it's frustrating and it's expensive, but um, I mean, I just don't see any other way to do things other than to get a bad reputation. So now did, um, when you purchased through that vendor, did you use like the insurance um, program that you can do to make sure that your products are coming? No. So I was unaware that there was something like that. I was using, a, um, what do you call it? Well, it's a wholesale house, I guess. Jing Sourcing, a sourcing company. And they seem to know their stuff and to be taking care of everything. And I thought it was all good. Um, and it was just ignorance, I guess. I, and now for this last shipment, because we still had more puzzles being made, um, I was able to purchase something to support the corners of the cartons, which she hadn't told me about. I mean, to me, if you know there's something to help protect the product, you would think that they would tell you about that in the first place, but she had not. So I added that to the order and I'm just hopeful that the one, and they're all coming to me. They're not going to Amazon first, so I can at least look at them, but they're not standing behind crushed boxes or any of that. So I'll just never deal with them again. Yeah. So what I would do too, is I would, um, if you paid that person with a credit card, I would do a charge back. I did uh, me personally. Yeah. They wouldn't take it. They had to have a wire transfer. Yeah. That's so funny. that's always a warning sign. So this is like, this is actually a really good communication. If somebody is not willing to get paid by a credit card, that in itself is a warning sign because they are, they do not want to be responsible and um, take, like, they don't want to put themselves at risk for chargebacks. So I wouldn't, like, if I can't pay with a credit card where I can then have Amex or Visa or MasterCard or whatever fight on my behalf, then I'm not, because if you do pay someone like with a credit card, and then you sent them like pictures, like you sent MasterCard pictures of your boxes that were sourced by that person. They would totally give you your money back. That's good to know. Next time. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, we learn these lessons as we're going through and, um, you know, unfortunately, like sometimes we learn the lessons and it's, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. Like when we launched our, our skincare product, um, we had a problem with the pumps in the bottles. And what was happening was that the, like we used an air pump and the, the air, like there was like a leak. So it wasn't giving like enough pressure and we had to redo the packaging too. Um, so, and what we did was people returned it and then we sent them another one and a bonus and, and all kinds of stuff. So Giovanna just said, you took one for all of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you did. And, um, and I don't think she, she wanted to be as benevolent <laughs> about that, but you do learn these experiences, you know, and then the best thing you can do, here's the other thing that I would advise all of you. You know, before I hire anybody, like get an opinion, um, you know, ask, ask people who they know, like, who do you know that can help with sourcing or who have you had an experience, a good experience with and, um, do that, you know, so, and, and make sure it's someone that you can, you know, pay with credit card and you're going, you know, they're going to guarantee their work. Unfortunately, so. my coach. Okay, Blue Evelyn. Sky. Oh. Oh, did your coach in Blue Sky give you that referral? Yeah, she did. Sorry, I, yeah. 
Okay, so then I would I would literally like get all over blue sky about it. I'll you let know? her huh? I'll let her know that that it didn't work out. Yeah. I mean I would do that and then I would like tag blue sky itself and be like, um, you know, what the hell? So that would be important. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, Evelyn. Yeah, hey Shannon. Uh, two things real quick. One of them, you have a lag, you know, you, you have a little delay that we all can hear just so you know, maybe you have okay. a on. Um, but just to real quick, because actually Adrian did raise his hand um, before me is um, Julia. That's why we have Emma that she can help you with that. She can maybe do the free consultation with her and just see if she can assist you with that, somebody to go and, and do the product um, inspection, okay? And number two, when we are buying uh, Shannon from India, it's very difficult that they will accept any type of payment uh, in the form of a visa or any other credit card that will protect us, unfortunately. Those um, vendors or suppliers will only accept wire transfers which is tough on us. You know, now if you do purchase from China, we do have the, the assurance payment, you know, protection that we can tell them we do not uh, like how the product came, it was damaged or whatever, and that insurance will protect us. Now on Monday, I did have somebody in our e-commerce session that will protect our shipments. If you remember, we have Matt Lovell with the insurance guy, and he may be able to assist you with that put in some sort of insurance on your products that you're purchasing internationally and shipping over to here and they are arriving damaged. So just a little tip, you know, for help. Maybe it will help you make sure that you talk to him. He'll not gonna charge you for any of that, but maybe he can guide you. And great session, Shannon, thank you. You're welcome. That's great information too, Evelyn. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't source something that I couldn't have some type of insurance on. There's too much stuff that can happen. I mean, just to give you an example, we like when we were building our house, um, we were having uh, tile, uh, not tile, what is it, travertine um, that was coming up at, out of South America and the ship sank with our, with our travertine on it, right? So, but it was insured. So we had to wait. I know Giovanna is laughing. But we had to wait, you know, for another shipload of the travertine. But like, you know, that happened. And I'll tell you how we how we learned to insure it. Our, one of our neighbors built a house and he had marble that was sourced in Italy that was coming to his house and his ship sank. It was caught in a typhoon and the whole thing like capsized in the ocean and it wasn't insured. And he ended up spending like another hundred thousand dollars to get the same stuff. So when we picked out our travertine with our builder, we said, he said, okay, we have to order this from Peru, I think. And I was like, can you make sure it's insured? And he was like, oh yeah, I'll definitely make sure it's insured. So then, cause I was like, oh yeah, what's the likelihood lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, our ship sank. I mean, not, not sank, the ship didn't sink. The carton fell off the ship in a storm. So, so it arrived, like the ship arrived and they were like, uh, okay, there's like a whole bunch of cartons missing because apparently if the, if, if it's going to capsize a ship or whatever, they release the belts and they just let this stuff fall into the ocean. I'm like, wouldn't you, could you imagine you like buy a BMW or something? They're like, oh, sorry, we, we let it go into the ocean. Um, you know, it's so crazy. I had no idea. So yeah, you want to make sure that your stuff's insured no matter where it's coming from. Okay, Adrian. Hi, Shannon. This is the first time I've met you. Hello, everybody. Not been on for a while. Been really busy. But yeah, I love the way you talk about insurance and all that. Um, I, when I took on my uh, Amazon business, I took that into account. You have to. And an instant I had was I was going stuff from China and I was going from the same company and they were brilliant. I great communication i was great communication with them which you said is a main thing of anything is communication and then i had three shipments of them and then one shipment didn't turn up it was 
three, four months, and they gave me excuse after excuse after excuse. And I kept professional. I kept them saying, you need to look at my situation. I've paid for this. Um, can you help me here? And in the end, said, the shipment's being lost. We'll send you a new order. So that was one instant. Another instant was always have a good communication with your supplier because I had a problem with my product. I said, look, I love your product. It's really good, but we've got an issue with the size. The size is not suitable for what they want. I'm starting to get negative feedback from Amazon, and I'm sorry, but can we come to some solution to, to make this product bigger? And because of the communication and being polite all the time, they said, yeah, they send me new samples, said to me, is this okay? I said, that's brilliant. And then they replaced the new order free of charge. But as you said, Shannon, communication is a big thing. If you get a good supplier, communicate with them. They will respect you for that. And I agree with you. When you buy any product from wherever in the world, always get insurance, no matter what. Because if something goes wrong, you've got backup rather than losing all your money. But yeah, I'm going to try to get on a bit more, but love to see you as all and carry on what you're doing. That is awesome, Adrian. Brilliant advice. Yeah, just, you know, kindness, I think kindness always gets you a better result than um, calling up and berating people or being frantic or, or any of that. So, and that just goes to show that, that his company replaced the entire order and it wasn't any fault of theirs. It was just that they, a different size was going to be valuable. So I like that. Sonia. Hey, Shannon. Hi, everyone. Hi. Had uh, Most people know here that I had an issue with my private label product, my, like you, Shannon, my spray nozzle on my bottle mm-hmm. did not spray a fine mist. It shot um, a stream. And if you're going to be spraying something on a woman's face or anyone's face, you don't want a stream <laughs> to hit <laughs> you in the face. So I've had a few uh, returns, but only one uh, review where they per where the person actually told me what was wrong with it, why they were returning it. And at first I was so pissed at, my, <laughs> at myself and at my supplier because I was so, I was in such a hurry to get the product to market, to get it to Amazon in time for Christmas that I didn't get a sample. I did a video approval and it looked fine everything worked fine and i said oh, go ahead ship it and then send me the samples um so this has been going on for like oh my god two months now but in working with my supplier because i had really good communication with them from the get-go and i wanted uh, to build a really good relationship with them so i made sure i knew how to respond reflect um, you know, what their business practices were in China, how to, res- how to be respectful in my responses and create a really good um, cor- um, correspondence and, and communication with my supplier. They said they'd send new, new nozzles and my freight forwarder, because I still have like 300 units sitting in the freight forwarder's warehouse in China, said, send us the nozzles, we'll prep the new shipment for you. Wow. So taking a lot of time and working with asking so many people for help, which I am not good at doing, but have gotten much better at asking for help. Um, the nozzles are now being replaced. I have a new launch with new pictures to demonstrate the new nozzle, uh, started and ready to go. I've asked Amazon to send me back some of the the product I still have in the warehouse so I can put the nozzles on them here myself. I've been approved in uh, another country to sell this product so I can take those ones and ship them over. It's been a lot of work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's been a lot of communication and a lot of getting out of my comfort zone to ask for help. Um, But the only thing I can share after all that is I'm finally starting to see some movement forward. I'm finally starting to see some progress to a solution. Um, So even though things may seem monumental and hugely overwhelming, just keep working at it just a little bit every day 
and and you will start to see progress. You will start to see a solution come up. That's yeah. right. I love that. I love it, Sonia. You know, it is an unexpected thing, but a lesson that you learned, which a lot, now you can share that lesson, right? So a lesson you learned is always get your sample and look mm -hmm. at it and make sure it's okay, right? And then, and then approve what's going to be done. And then the second lesson that we've learned is like, figure out how to get insured um, because otherwise it can be, um, you know, there can be a lot of problems that result from not, um, not getting insured. And fortunately in the mastermind group, you do have um, access to Matt Lavelle to, you know, see what options there are on getting insured in your businesses, right? So to make sure that you have that, um, that protection there. Awesome. Okay. Evelyn Smith. Hi there. I apologize for my camera being off. Uh, I just wanted to share quickly an experience I'm having with a photographer. I have, yeah, I'm at the point where my supplier is holding my, my product at the border and his, in his, he's in his warehouse in Texas. And he's waiting for me to give the green light to ship it to Chicago but I'm waiting for the photographer to give me the pictures. And the photographer is about two weeks late. And um, at this point, I'm at a really disadvantage, I'm at a disadvantage because I didn't lay out a deadline scheme to him to say, you know, to really stress and explain to him that there are other moving parts. There's a, there are other people in the picture here that are also having to stay on deadlines. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on here. He's a photographer that was recommended to me by my Amazon coach. And I've mentioned to him twice that, hey, uh, Larry Narvaez recommended you. So I'm really looking forward to seeing your work. He said that you do a really good job, um, but he's two weeks late. I don't know what's going on. And I sent him an email three days ago and he hasn't responded. So the lesson that I'm learning is, wow, I really like it when people are prompt with me and they answer my email the same day um, my suppliers are like that and that's why I chose him because he's very prompt and he over delivers uh, and I am realizing that when somebody is slow like this photographer being slow with me it makes me look slow to my supplier and he's waiting on me so I, I you know in the future I need to be working with people that are going to be prompt that's really really important that has just gone up to the top one or two priorities and the criteria that I'm looking for. And in the future, the lesson I've learned here is I've got, when I go to work with somebody new, I'm gonna to have to explain to them that promptness is really, really important because I have these other people and that I'm looking for a long-term relationship. I'm looking to have a long-term uh, um, repeat business with them, but we're gonna to have to see and promptness is super important. So uh, yeah, that's been my, um, my lesson, and this is a really good topic. I don't think we've talked about this sort of thing before that I can remember. Thank you very much, Shannon. Yeah, so um, Evelyn, I just have a question on this. Is your product needing to stay in Texas so that the photographer can go there and take the pictures? Oh no, the photographer uh, received the product two weeks ago. Oh, no, I'm sorry, almost three weeks ago. And he said it would be a five day turnaround. So he's, he's got the product. Oh, okay. So, so your supplier is then sending the product to Amazon. Yes. The suppliers got his warehouse in Texas and the photographers in Columbia. Okay. So, you know, here, would be, here's, here is what I would do in that situation. Um, if you have product on you, and again, if you um, were able to pay with a credit card or PayPal, um, I would reverse the charge and I would get a new photographer to do it. And I would in the contract, put the date and time that the photos have to be turned back to you Yes, and, and do that because when somebody is like that far off it's, and they're, and then they're not communicating the odds of you getting the result that you want to get is it, it goes down exponentially over time. Right. And then just like with um, Julia, I would call Blue Sky and I would slam them for the referral. And because this, this is what I would call a trend, 
Julia's coach recommended someone bad to her. Your coach recommended someone bad to you. Right. Um, and I like, don't let them off the hook with it. Does that yeah, make sense? Well, look, yes, absolutely. I luckily I haven't paid him anything yet, Oh, okay. but he, he's putting at times money and he's putting me behind in schedule. So that's the frustrating part. And, um, yeah, I suppose I could find, you know, my supplier, they, they're good business people. He and his brother are good business people. Maybe they know somebody in Texas who would be willing to do this. And they do work with other Amazon sellers. So I've got to ask him today if he could. They probably do. If not, I've, uh, where's your stuff in Austin? It's in Laredo. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I have a ton of friends who sell Amazon that are in Austin. And I'm sure that they know photographers. Oh, there's there. lots of photographers in Austin, I'm sure. Yeah. So, and I had Chelsea Cohen come out here on the call, um, on, on the mastermind to talk about, you know, how to write your listing, um, mm -hmm. and copywriting for listings. She would know, uh, who's in that area. So you could reach out to her as well. Awesome idea. Thank you, Shannon. Oh, and then, um, Stefan Bauman apparently is a photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Stefan's right here on the call. Stefan, your hand is raised. <laughs> Come on out. Oh, sorry about that. Hey, um, yeah, as far as the, uh, the stuff from the photographer, is, are you waiting on the images themselves or are you waiting for him to even do the project? I'm waiting on, on him to send me his sample image, sample images for me to approve. Oh, so he hasn't even sent you the samples yet? He hasn't sent me image one. So that means he hasn't done it yet? um all right yeah well give me a call afterwards i'll i'd be happy to help you out with it um as far as in the future if you ever have anything like where you need to have it edited quickly um there's a service that i've used that i that i'm very happy with called edit smart so they do video and photography so if you ever need to have something edited on the fly um their prices are pretty reasonable just edit smart.com and uh, i've used them to edit a wedding video because it was it was starting to take me too long i just couldn't i was like i want to get this to the client i don't want to waste time anymore just paid him 350 and it was for a half hour video i mean it's great what is that what's the name of that um edit smart edit smart okay so what what we should do is um put together a directory of JLSM members, and then also a, a tools or referral directory. Um, so I'm going to put together some Google sheets on this that we can start adding to this way. Everybody will have access to who does what. And, you know, um, like any vetted service, like a service that other people have used that they're like, yeah, this is a score. We can put that on there too. Okay, awesome. Julia, <clears throat> we can also put the crappy services. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I put it in the chat, but in case Steph, or in case um, Evelyn, sorry, didn't see it. Um, it does take a long time once you send your products to Amazon before anybody can get them. So as soon as you've got somebody who you feel confident about that's gonna do your photos, you probably have plenty of time to go ahead and send them to Amazon, let them start parsing them out across the country and you can get your pictures up. Uh, I wouldn't wait until you have your pictures absolutely in hand. And that's just my advice because it took a month for our puzzles to get ready for anybody to actually order them a whole month. Just a thought. And I, if I can add to that, you guys know that you can reach out to me and ask me questions. Evelyn, I could have told you this two or three weeks ago to go ahead and move the shipment forward. I will have referred you to Stefan or to Wayne Bradford and help you move. You know, guys, just because sometimes we say we're busy, that doesn't mean we cannot help you and we cannot guide you. So please reach out to your group here. There is so many people that have so many resources that can help us out move forward. So, you know, don't think you're bothering anybody because you're not. That's why we're a family. We're here together. We've gone through things and you all know that. And we have our e-commerce sessions. And I always say, 
do you have a question? Do you need help with anything? You want to talk about anything, you know, ask. So don't don't hold your shipments or or any questions that you may have. And if you don't want to do it publicly, you can do it privately, one on one. Yeah, great advice. Great advice. Okay, well, we need to conclude because I've got another call coming up. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love doing these sessions. This is so much fun. Um, before we conclude, I, I'm going to put a link here in the chat um, for you guys. Um, John and I have an upcoming CEO Freedom Challenge. If you would like to participate, um, you are more than welcome to. It's a lot of fun. Um, we do um, announce our program at the end of it on day five, so you can learn about that as well. But even if you didn't do the accelerator program, which a bunch of the ladies here are in um, the accelerator, um, even if you didn't do the accelerator, just doing the challenge alone is totally worth it. Um, it's five days, and in those five days, we work on getting you a plan of action to scale and grow your business without the hustle. So, um, okay, Julia, I'll get back to you um, on that. We're, I'm using two different calendar programs now while we're switching over. So there's been a little haphazardness happening <laughs> with that. Um, okay, good. And then gentle yoga and relaxation today. Oh my gosh, I wish I could be on that one. I unfortunately have a call, but that sounds dreamy. Um, okay, good. So thanks you to all of you for being here. You're super fantastic. We'll create those directories for you. Um, Evelyn's an amazing resource for you as well. And of course, Emma is an amazing resource for sourcing too. Um, and you, you know, you have, you have great people within this group to connect with. So I put the link there for the challenge. You'll also get an email about it, but you can um, sign up and register and then, you know, participate with us. Okay. Have a great day, everyone.